Hey guys, I'm Matt. This is Malt. Welcome to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about how to deck out pretty much any bike with some sick Christmas LEDs for the Christmas season. And yeah, just kind of like some tips and tricks. Uh, I've done this on a Honda Rebel 500, my Husqvarna Smart Villain 401, and now my Triumph Bonneville T100. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So first and foremost, when I am talking about setting up your bike with these Christmas lights, there are a couple things to bear in mind. Number one, if you choose to go the way of getting a set of lights that plugs directly into your bike, whether it be a direct battery connection or using a uh, cigarette lighter attachment or USB attachment, whatever the case is, that's going to have admittedly a very tiny amount, but it is going to have a little bit of parasitic draw coming from your battery. Not really a huge deal, but there are, uh, it is kind of an issue that sometimes pops up with uh, the Bonneville. This is an air-cooled model. Sometimes it, the battery, eh, the battery leaves a little bit to be, be desired. When this one finally goes, I'll be upgrading to a lithium battery. But for right now, I didn't want to put any kind of load on the battery. So what I did was I went on Amazon and got one of these. This is just a pack. This is just a four AA batteries put into this little disc. I can toss it into a saddlebag, or in this case, a molly bag that I have mounted up to these uh, saddlebag supports. And I can toss in the battery pack there. It's out of the way, it's out of sight, and it gives me more real estate for putting pretty lights. So if I were to give you advice, step one is avoid putting any kind of load on your battery. Uh, plus, if you use heated gear, obviously you will not be able to use the heated gear if uh, lights are plugged in versus your heated gloves, heated vest, whatever that case may be. Tip number two is staying away from the engine. As much as it is tempting to put these lights really, really close to the engine, this is an air-cooled parallel twin. It gets hot. This engine gets very, very, very hot, especially over here around the exhaust, uh, to the point where on a particularly cold, cold morning, I can simply take off my glove and hover it right around here and my hand stays nice and toasty. So I did not want any of these lights anywhere near there. So the first thing is understand what parts of your bike can absolutely not have lights on it. In my case, with this type of engine setup, I could not have any lights anywhere near the engine. On the Spart Pillin, however, there was a little bit more fairing around the top part of the engine, so I could wire some of the wires a little bit closer to the engine and kind of highlight a line that was coming up this way because the tank is a little bit more angular. This one's a bit more bulbous. Uh, so yeah, that's the second tip. Understand where lights absolutely cannot touch for reasons of... Uh, this could either be because of heat, like in this case, it could be if you have a dual sport bike or a bike that has an awful lot of suspension travel, make sure that you have the lights wired up in such a way that uh, it's not getting in the way of those moving parts and the suspension. Uh, if the swing arm it tends to move up and down quite a lot, for example, make sure that you have the lights wired in such a way that they're not going to become slack and then uh, get tangled into places they shouldn't. The third tip, and this one's probably the most easily overlooked, I overlooked, I almost overlooked it this time when I was wiring up this, is your steering. You need to make sure that the steering of your bike is not compromised when you are wiring your bike. That means you should be able to, without putting any strain on these lights, so we can look and see the slack here, I should be able to go full tilt all the way to the left, still have the same amount of slack, full tilt to the right, still have the same amount of slack. There shouldn't be any hesitance, there shouldn't be uh, any hang-ups, there shouldn't be anything stopping your bike from turning. That is a recipe for disaster. So, uh, if I could give you a bit of advice, get yourself one of these. These little clear 3M hooks, uh, the command strips, that way when the Christmas season is over, all I gotta do is pull that white tab and all the adhesive comes right off. And I can use this as a tie-off point for these lights before they get to my steering column. I can give them enough slack and then tie up that slack way down here so that 
it doesn't look like there's any slack. It looks like these lights are being pulled taut and perhaps they might snap if I turn too hard. But no, I can turn any direction I want and it's not putting any undue stress on these lights and vice versa, the lights are not putting any undue stress on the steering column. So if, you, if I had to give you some advice, get yourself a command strip, put it right down here. I've got uh, two or three zip ties holding these lights to this point so that way they don't move. And when the Christmas season is over, then I'm going to just cut it off and remove the lights. So the next tip, this isn't so much a tip so much as kind of stating the obvious, but maybe you might not like to hear it, is be liberal with your zip ties. Uh, I can't stress that enough. Uh, if you have any liars that are loose, any wires that are moving around, uh, it might be tempting to just wrap them over and over again. Uh, I did that here with this, but there is still a zip tie holding them down over here and over here. And then I can't even tell you how many zip ties are over here. We've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then let me, let me reach back here under the seat, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, uh, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, I think I've got like 19, 20 somewhere over here, and I just kept going. I have somewhere in the ballpark of about 50 zip ties holding these lights together. And is that a royal pain in the butt to set up? Yes. Will it be a bit of a royal pain in the butt to snip all of these off? Yes. But does this mean that I have absolutely no wires loose and I don't hear any rattling when I'm riding? Yes. None of this comes loose. None of this rattles. None of this makes any noise or moves out of place. All of these lights are exactly in the same position they were when I fir first put them on. And I expect them to still be in these positions when I go to take them off in about a month. Uh, so if you absolutely have to do anything like that, make sure you are being liberal with your zip ties. And that's going to do it for me. Thank you very much for watching. Hope this gave you some ideas and have a good one. Mm -hmm.